Hello and welcome to Airlight Geospatial. Today we'll be concluding on the video we'll be making on uh, how to acquire or download precipitation data online. And um, we'll be concluding because today I will give you my recommendation over the few days research I've been making regarding all of this. And uh, I will give you my recommendation which one I prefer. And uh, don't go anywhere, just keep on the video. So we looked at stereo data and we also looked at uh, power access. And then today we're going to be looking at uh, well claim. All right, so when you search well claim, so this is the website wellclaim.org. Uh, it's just world claim, that's world claimant. And what we want to be downloading is historical data. But let's start from the site. So let's start from the beginning of the site. Once you enter realmclaim.org, you're going to see uh, maps, graphs, table, and data of global climate. So you click on download. Now, once you click on download, you're going to be taken to this place where you see you can download gridded weather and climate climate data for historical. So you click on it and then you close this. So on the historic historical climate data, you see is that this one claim version two by one data climate data is for 1970 to 2000. This version was released in January 2020. And they said they are monthly climate data for minimum, mean, and maximum temperature, precipitation, solar radiation, wind speed, water vapor pressure, and for total precipitation. And so you take your time to read through it so that you understand precisely what and what it's all for. And then the data is available at full spatial resolution between 30 seconds to 10 minutes. So these are the summary of data. We have temperature, maximum temperature, average, and then here we're interested in precipitation. That's our rainfall. So the rainfall, they are available in 10 meter, 5 meter, 2.5 meter, and 30 seconds. So as you know, 5 30 seconds is the best among this. So you click on this uh, 30 seconds. So I have that logo. Once you click on it, you have an IDM installed. It's going to pop up and begin to download. So you see, mine has downloaded. That's why I see just automatically click on. But then when you click on yours, you have to download. It's around 977 megabytes. All right, so let's follow now to ArcGIS to process this data. So once you've downloaded it, they're going to have it in a, in a zip file. So this is it, 977 MB. So you right click on it and then you go to any of your extractor. If you have Zen uh, 7 zip or you have a Windra, you can use any of them to extract this data. Properly, you right click on the file and you choose your extracting software and then you come down to extract to that sample folder. so it's going to start extracting so once this is done extracting you're going to see it like this so it contains 12 you can also read this uh, instruction left here and then it contains 12 uh, geotiff files so you see 13 because this is also selected so each of these like this one that is one is january february march april may june july august september october november and december so each of them, it's a mean, or let's say a, an average of the rainfall data for a whole month from 1970 to 2000. All right. So basically, uh, whatever you're doing is within those period. Now, 
I will copy this data and take it to my C drive. All right. So I cut it and take it to my C drive. That's where I do all my work. So it's there. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste it. That will be replacing because I already have it there. So it's going to replace. All right. Then we'll right, uh, we'll, we'll go over now to ArcMap. So I'm using ArcMap uh, desktop. 10.8.2 so this is the study area i want to be working on but well, actually this is my study area this chigo here is where i am working on this is where i'm working on but uh i have to reduce the data so that i should be able to um i should be able to uh get what i want i think one of my drive just pull off so so this is where i want to work on so i'm going to click on this and then i want to work on the month of august so i'm going to click on it so i'm going to add it to uh I'm going to add it to this file so I think the last video we had where I showed you how you can get um, you can get shapefile of any country of your choice. Now, if you remember that video, then we are good to go. But this was pretty a download. So let's uh, let's hurry back to that video to download our administrative file. So I said the website is diva, diva data, diva but all data and all that. So because one of my drive just pull off, if I want, I have to stop this video for me to be able to go there. But that we can avoid it by just downloading this. Uh, this is Niger, and we're working in Nigeria, and it's administrative area we're looking for. So I'll click on OK, and then we'll click on download. So this will be downloaded and we'll hurry up to continue our video. So it's downloaded. Let's go to the folder and we're going to right click and we're going to extract as well. But then we're going to take it to our local disk where all my work is there. I'm going to drop it here. I'm going to go back to ArcGIS now. And I'm going to add the data. So I have it here. So I'm interested in the state. So the state will be this ng admin one. So I'm going to click on add. So that will be added. So I'm going to right click and then I'm going to attribute table I'm going to look locate Kaduna state so here is Kaduna so I'm going to highlight Kaduna and I'm going to export this Kaduna so I'm going to have Kaduna placed here as shape file so I'm nominate Kaduna so I'm going to export it Yes. So now I'm going to remove this. So we're left with uh, what we want to work on. This is Kaduna. So now, um, first of all, what we will do here is that we're going to extract Kaduna out because if I want to convert the whole of this into a point, this is a global data. It will take a machine for that to be done. So I'm just going to, and then you know that it's in 30 seconds. So it's that high. So I'm going to just extract Kaduna out of it. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to clip. It all right extract by max by searching or you come to clip and then you clip out a portion of raster. So I'm going to bring in our our data. So our extent will be Kaduna and we're going to ask it to use this input feature for clipping geometry. And we're going to select a location for it and we're going to name it Kaduna pre precipitation 
I'm going to save and we're going to click on OK. So we'll wait for it to extract. So I guess Cardona State has been extracted. So we have no business with this anymore. So we remove it out of our way. So let's make this a whole loop so that we look at it. So now our precipitation data has come down to this place. Now, one of the reasons why I use Cardona because this keyboard where is my study area, but I'm using Cardona because I'm reducing the workload down so that I can ex uh, extract this into, uh, so that I can uh, convert this into point. Then in that way, I can also have my study area included. All right. So uh, we're going to now go to catalog. So go to our twin box. And then we convert raster to point. So our raster now we're going to input cardinal precipitation. And then we are going to, let's just leave it to uh, a default layer. And then we'll click on OK. So it's going to convert the whole of this into point. Now, once they are all converted, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to lower this point into our study area. Then we can now perform our um, we can now perform our interpolation. So I'm going to is now in shape file. So I'm going to use this geo processing, and then I'm going to click on clip. So um, the input will be Kaduna, Rasta Kaduna, and then the out the um, clip future rather the extend will now be Kigo. And then we're now going to have our study area. We just say study area. And then we'll click on save and we'll click on OK. So let's remove Kiku now. Sorry, let's remove uh, Kaduna now. Let's remove Kaduna. Let's remove Kaduna. So we're going to have, um, let's zoom to extent so that you see what I'm saying. So, um, we're going to have a point rounding all of this place. So these are the uh, uh, points we've converted so that we can perform the interpolation ourselves in that way. But now, if you look at you have quite a number of points here, compared to uh, CRU data. In CRU data, we couldn't get anything uh, better than having to use the whole of Kaduna, then we have to do interpolation in Kaduna. And then uh, we later just, um, we later just uh, interpolate the Kaduna and then cut off a portion out of it. So you see, this is the wrong we did of uh, that one. If you check, this is where we get. But then it's based on the interpolation. We try extracting points on those ones, it didn't work. So. I think I'll prefer this because this is up to a margin of 30 seconds. And then you have even a small study area having a uh, plenty point that you can interpolate. All right, so let's go ahead and perform our interpolation for this so that we can finalize this video. So um, we'll go to spatial analyst, then we go down to in case you don't know where it is, you can search. So we'll go to interpolation and we're going to use IDW. So click on it and you impute. Our input will be what? Study area. And then what we is this grid code. And we will put a uh, rain. We're going to put rain here, yeah, only rain. So we're going to OK and we'll go to environment and then processing extent. We change this to Kigo and we go down to raster analysis like I've always been explaining in previous video. So our max will be Kigo. So you now OK. So we now OK to have our interpolation. Now, this is our interpolation of uh, the rainfall. 
So we can go to properties and we're going to reclassify this into a five class and then we can change uh, this. And then we also click on here to format this, let's say, into three decimal place. So let's say three decimal place. And, and let's click this three decimal place. So we have them in three decimal place and then we are going to click on OK. So you see this is now our rainfall uh, data. So basically my recommendation will still be CRU data because this data is just a combination of as sweet and as high as this data is. We realize that it has only to 2000. We've not seen that of 2000 down to uh, 2023 20, or 24. But also, this data is an average of all of them. Unlike uh, the other data that if I enter here now, I enter the, the data itself. Let's go back. Let's say I click on this. It's just going to bring me here and open. It's not going to show me other bands then classifying those bars into another thing. So I think CRU data remains the best for me, even though this have up to 30 seconds, but how I wish they can also do an improvement and do one or two things to it, to have a monthly of each year, have yearly data and all that. But then CRU data still gives you better option and better of what to do in terms of this analysis. So I recommend CRU data. All right, so this brings us to the end of this video, and I hope you like it, and I've been giving you something to work on. So thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment, and refer to a friend, and a friend should refer to a friend. Till I come your way again next week. Bye-bye.